Hey, what's going on everybody? Tim here. Just out taking another hike. I went up to Cub Lake here in Rocky Mountain National Park. It's like an eight mile round trip hike from the Y. And I'd been up there before in the winter time and the lake was frozen over and there was snow everywhere. It was kind of dangerous. I went at like the wrong time of year. So I figured I wanted to go when the snow had melted, kind of the springtime. But I was a little disappointed because all the foil, <laughs> all the, all the trees, I was, <laughs> I was trying to say foliage, but uh, all the trees and stuff up there are still dead. Um, so it, the, the lake wasn't frozen, but you didn't get the nice picturesque, you know, green foliage and blue water. It just was kind of lake, you know, just, but I mean, it was worth it for the hike, but I didn't get the pictures I really wanted to get. And there are a lot of people. It's a Sunday. I should have waited till tomorrow. But it's a Sunday, so there's a lot of people there. And it's hard for me to hike around other people because I walk so fast. So I'm constantly having to like go around people or like walk up behind them and wait. It's and you know, and then I have to talk to people. Hey, how are you doing? Good to see you. Thank you. You know, excuse me. And I like hiking because I get away from everybody. So yeah, the first part of the hike from the Y to like where the trailhead starts, there's nobody. That's the part I'm on now. But the second part, there was a ton of people. So not my best hike, but it was still good to get out into nature and, you know, have some quiet time. When I finally got to the lake, I walked off kind of by myself, sat down for about 15 minutes and just, you know, listened to the sounds of the, of the lake. And there were some ducks out there. Oh, and I did get to see some moose. There were some moose about halfway through the hike uh there were some moose and they actually walked right in front of me and uh so i had to hold up for about five minutes while they got out the way because i don't need to get moose attacked out here but uh yeah that was pretty cool so anyway i've decided i want to start talking more about living free um i really spend hours thinking about kind of like where i want my channel to go things like that and i feel like one of my major talking points from now on is going to be living free we're taught, you know, that we're free. We have all these freedoms, especially here in America, land of the free, things like that. But in the, in actuality, we're really not that free. Um, in actuality, we're brought up and programmed uh, to be, you know, willfully enslaved. We really are. And, you know, the more I think on this and the more I see this, the more I look around at the people around me and I just get super, you know, almost angry. I don't get really angry because that's an emotion I try not to really, you know, deal in. But I just, I mean, it's sad and it can get you angry when you just see how people are living their lives. And for no reason other than that, this is how they were taught to live their lives. So I want to do my part and talk more about living free, about alternative lifestyles, about chasing your dreams, which I've been talking about already. But in today's video, I wanted to talk about what I feel is the number one thing you need to do if you want to live free, if you want to have a free life where you are, instead of just doing what you have to doing what you want to do, the number one thing I feel you have to do is kill your bills. you got to get rid of those bills. I know some of you are saying, well, what about debt? Uh, debt's the number two thing. I put bills as number one because everybody, not everybody, but most people have some type of bill. You don't have to. Uh, even me, who tries to live very free and have very few bills, I've got, um, you know, like my cell phone and my health insurance, um, and a sponsor a child in the Philippines. So I consider that kind of a bill because I try to pay every month. Though sometimes I don't have the money, so I don't. <laughs> or I don't have the money that I want to spend that month. Um, but I try to pretty regularly send that money in. So I consider that a bill. Uh, even then, it's my total, including that, is like only like 120 bucks a month for bills. So, uh, but even I, who tries to be very Mr. No Bills, has some bills. And I feel like most people uh, kind of have some type of bill. So that's why I put it as the number one thing. And so I'm not saying that bills are, you know, the problem. I'm saying the ideal that most people have that having lots of bills is a problem. Having bills that equal up almost to exactly the amount you make, if not more a month, is a problem. I'm saying that having unnecessary bills for things you don't even use uh, is a problem. I'm saying just the idea that, you know, oh, everybody has bills, so, you know, we'll just take on another bill. It's not a big deal. That's the problem. The mindset towards bills is the problem. I think that the mindset should be to have as few bills as possible, um, 
if you can get your bills to half your income or lower than that, that's perfect. And I know for a lot of people, uh, you know, they're just going, oh, that's impossible. Um, but I mean, it takes work. It takes time. But it is possible to do. I feel like the first thing you want to do is start with the bills that are things that you know you really don't need. Or bills that you know are kind of unnecessary. This day and age, there's so many like subscription things you can subscribe to. $9.99 here, $8.88 here, $7.77 here. All these little uh, different channels you can subscribe to. Um, different, uh, you know, these subscription boxes come in the mail, magazines, all this other stuff that you can get and it seems like it doesn't cost anything and it might even be a good deal you know uh for instance like netflix nine dollars a month ten dollars a month whatever it is that's a great deal for all the shows you get uh but you've been you we've all experienced you got on netflix you've seen everything you want to see uh you're trying to cut your bills back get rid of netflix for a couple of months i know that's only twenty dollars but this is the type of thing you have to start doing finding little bills that you don't really need and getting rid of them you know, and it doesn't have to be permanent. Like I said, you go a couple months without Netflix and you see a show you want on there, you might get it back. But it's the, uh, you save 20 bucks, which isn't bad. And there's lots of little bills like that we have in our lives that we can get rid of permanently or even for a small part of time. You know, I think setting savings goals really helps because uh, if you have savings goals, that little 20 bucks you saved in our example we just talked about might not seem like much. But if I have a savings goals of $500 and that 20 goes to that 500, well, it's actually helping me out. I can kind of see how that money, you know, went to somewhere good. Anyway, but, you know, start with the little bills, things you don't need. Totally get rid of them. Get rid of them for the time being. What I found that happens is when I get rid of bills for a little bit, I might get it back and I get rid of it again. Eventually, I just get rid of it forever. Like, I'm like, okay, whatever. I don't need this done uh then you go up to kind of other bills i've talked about more about like the cell phone now my cell phone now i will admit i'm not totally following this advice uh because my cell phone bill now is 60 bucks a month which is cheap 60 bucks a month for unlimited so it's definitely cheap i did my research uh, i got cricket wireless and i don't have any problems this is the first place i've worked where i haven't had a decent cell signal so i'm actually using this uh text me now app to make my calls and everything. So I could get rid of the unlimited package I have on my cell phone and make my cell phone bill a little cheaper. The reason I don't is because when I do go into town and have signal, if I wanna upload like a YouTube video or you know live stream maybe, which I haven't done from my phone, but just there's certain things I might wanna do that I kinda of like having unlimited internet for. So I kept it, but it's only 60 bucks. But you can do your research and you don't have to be paying 100 some dollars a month for your cell phone. You definitely don't have to be paying for like an $800 cell phone. That's another video. But you don't have to pay that much for your cell phone. Do your research. You can get a cell phone down to like 30 bucks, especially now that Wi-Fi is prevalent, it's everywhere. This little uh, Text Me Now app I was talking about works. It's free, works over Wi-Fi. And every now and then I have some issues with it. But for free, it's fine. You can just get a little cheap, whatever, so many gig a month plan. Use something like that to make all your phone calls and stuff. Good to go. Like, there are some ways in which technology is good. And one is that it does, it can help us to save money sometimes. And that's just one example. But you got to think about other bills that you have that you can get rid of. The, you know, medium sized bills. And then you move on to the big bills. Uh, you know, the, the biggest bill you'll probably ever have, um, is of course like car note and then you've got housing. Those are the two biggest bills you're always going to have. And that's where most people's money go to. And those are the bills that people will say, well, you have to have those. So, you know, I'm just gonna have to deal with that. Have to deal with those bills. You know, two thirds of my income gone every month from those two bills, but it's not entirely true. A, you don't have to have a car. I'm going to do a video soon about living carless. You don't have to have a car. Um, but if you live in an area where you, you know, there's public transportation in lots of areas, you can ride a bike, things like that. But if you're not into that, or some people live in areas where there's no public transportation, you can save up and buy a beater car. You know, save up, get you a couple of thousand dollars, buy you a beater car. Then all you got is car insurance. You're not forking out three or $400 a month on your car. It may not be as cool. The ladies might not think it's as sexy. Um, people at your job might laugh at you, but screw them. You're trying to live free. You're not trying to be enslaved by these bills. 
that's just that's what I've always done. I've always bought beater cars. <laughs> My bosses have always like kind of looked at me funny. Like, why do you have such a beater car? I know I'm paying you, you know, decent money, but I'm just like, I don't like a car note. The few times I had a car note, the car ended up going back because I just don't like for me, three, four hundred dollars a month. It's a large chunk of change to come out of my wallet. I could be doing all kinds of stuff with that. Um, and the, the car insurance alone is, is too much. hundred bucks for car insurance a month, $1,200 a year. I can't deal. That's kind of why I don't have a car now. But there's all kinds of alternatives. You got Uber now. You got all these other like ride rental programs out there. If you're really serious about cutting the bills back, you can figure out a way to do it. Now, the biggest one, housing. That's a big one. Um, got to have a place to live. Got to have some type of shelter. Um, and... You know, me, I'm not big on, like, buying a house, but even renting a house can get expensive. But once again, it's one of those things, have to do your research. I did a video about saving money by renting a room. One of the best things I ever did saved me some of, like, the most money in my life. Just rented a room. I knew every month all I needed was $350, $400, whatever it was. Plopped that down, I was good to go, had a place to stay. Like I say, that may not be for everyone, but even when it comes to housing you can figure out ways to maybe when your lease is up find a smaller place find a cheaper place um maybe rent out a room in your house to someone else to, to get some money coming in to lessen the impact of the rent or the mortgage just get creative with it you don't have to your housing situation does not have to be the way that you know everyone else says it has to be you can do something really crazy like me and do seasonal work most of the year and so your housing is provided they take a little bit for it out of your check but I kind of don't even consider that a bill because I don't see I don't get the money then have to pay it back so I guess technically I do pay for housing but I never see the money you know so I'm fine with the money I get on my check since I have so I don't have to pay rent or anything like that the money like I say I I have hundred twenty dollars worth of bills a month um, my first, you know, I get two paychecks a month. That's not even, that's about like a quarter um, of my first paycheck. And so the rest of the money I get, I don't make a lot of money. You can do the math. You can see it. I don't make a lot of money. But uh, <laughs> all my bills, I can pay like a quarter of my first paycheck. The rest of the money of the month is just like free money. Like it's, it's my money. Uh, you're starting to do the math. You're like, man, that Tim is broke. Nope, I save. Anyway, <laughs> don't make a lot of money. But uh, I don't stress about not making any money because I have no bills. <laughs> and that's kind of the point of this video. When you get your bills low enough, so many people live in paycheck to paycheck. So many people are, you know, just, you know, have to go to work, go to the job because they have these bills that have to be paid. Um, if they ever were to lose their job or something happens, sadly, they could, you know, lose their house, lose their car. The kids wouldn't eat, you know, like major things would happen if something was to happen at their job or if they were just have to take like a week off or something. It's not that some people don't want to save or don't want to invest or whatever. It's just they don't have any extra income because their bills are taking up all their money. And that's why I say bills are the number one thing that keeps you from living free. Because uh, when it comes to bills, you have to live a certain way, you have to work a certain place, you have to work so many hours, because you have these bills that have to be paid. When you start getting rid of these bills, when you start cutting them back, and you start having that breathing room on your paycheck, when you start having money left over on your paycheck, when you start being able to put money in the bank and invest money, your options open up. And that's what it's all about. Freedom is about options. And the more money each month you have to play with for yourself, that you're not just paying back out, the more options you have. Then you can start saying, oh man, what would I really like to do? Where would I really like to work? I might can go get a job uh, somewhere I really want to work that pays less money, um, maybe less hours, but I can afford it because I don't have these bills. I might want to save up and, you know, buy a van or buy an RV, travel around. You know, I can afford to do that because I don't have all these bills. I'm putting money in the bank. I can afford to take a year off and have my bills paid because I'm putting money in the bank and then I can write that novel I'm wanting to write or I can go visit my, you know, my mother and stay with her for six months or I can go on that trip overseas I've been wanting to take. All these options open up when you don't have so many bills, you know? 
if you're going to have to work for the money, you know, I'm trying to get some good lighting. Is the lighting okay? Where are we? Where's the best lighting? That way. Okay. If you're, if you're going to have to work for the money, you know, if you're going to have to trade your time and your energy for the money, you might as well do something you want to do with the money instead of just paying bills. Now, if you want to have tons of bills and uh, the things that your bills are providing are the things you want, go ahead. But if you've been thinking about living a freer life, if you've been thinking about getting more control of your life, number one thing I recommend is killing your bills. Or if not totally killing them, um, you know, getting them where they're on life support. <laughs> getting them to where they got the plug uh, and the machine and they're barely breathing. Get them down low enough. And then I, I can I can attest to this from personal experience. There is a big difference from going to work when you know you have to work to pay bills and going to work because you, you know, like working and you, you like your job and, you know, you, you still need money. Um, but it's not a total ironclad necessity. When you're working just to pay bills, it is the most depressing. I've been there. I've been there. I had a roommate one time. He said, Tim, I don't see why you want to eat ramen noodles and microwave pizzas every night. I said, I don't want to. I got to. Like, <laughs> all the money I made went to my bills. I had like, I don't know, maybe 50 bucks left over at the end of the week. And I was still drinking then. So 30 of that went to beer during the week. You know, so it's like 20 bucks for food. I know. Yeah, 20 for food, 30 for beer. I know. I told you, I used to enjoy my beers. <laughs> and I had to drink cheap beers to keep it at $30. But so, yeah, I've been there. I was basically working just to pay the bills and survive. It sucked. I hated it. Um, finally, I, I did eventually get out of that hole, got some leeway. I actually switched jobs and started making more money. But uh, I've been there. I know it sucks when you're working just to pay the bills. It's like, what's the point? And then you have this constant fear that something bad is going to happen and you're not going to have the money. It was horrible. stressful. Uh, when you start to lower your bills, that's more money per month. Uh, especially if you like really do a budget and see how much money you have coming in that you can play with and you really get adult about it. Um, opens up all these avenues and you breathe so much easier. And you, you're not stressed. You know, once you get a certain amount in the bank or something, yeah, you don't want to just, you know, lose your job or get sick and have to take two weeks unpaid off or something. But you're not worried about it. You know, the refrigerator blows up. You're not worried about it. You know? These freedom, this options comes from having less bills. I mean, accidents happen, money has to go out, but it's not a regular thing. Bills are a regular thing. This amount of money must be paid in every month. It's just sucking your wealth away from you. And like I said before, for a lot of times, it's for stuff that we don't even need, we don't even care about, that we could put to much better use. So if you are thinking of living a freer lifestyle, kind of a different lifestyle first thing i recommend cutting those bills back um look at it drastically you know uh, and, and and this is, i will tell you this it starts getting fun when you really start getting into kind of the big bills and you start doing stuff that you know people think is weird when you sell your car and start taking the bus to work every day people start thinking you're weird but it feels good uh, you know, <laughs> when you, when your release is up and you go rent a room in somebody's house, people think you're weird, but it feels good. I think part of that is because you're, you're, you're going against the, the norm. So you're kind of, you know, you're living a life you want to be living. You know, you're doing things that I'm doing this because I want to do it. Not because everybody else says to do it. And I think that feels good, but, uh, it's just think of some outside of the box, radical, crazy ways to like kill your bills or at least put them down on life support. Um, and I promise you, not only will the financial benefits uh, be good and worth it, but also they'll be uh, just the way you look at yourself and look at your life will change. When you start taking control of your life and saying, I'm just not gonna blindly do what everybody else says do, it's, it's, it's totally different. Um, start feeling alive. So kill those bills. That's my advice. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments in the comment box below. If you've started like slowly strangling your bills, getting them down, um, what type of lifestyle you're thinking about living, um, in the future, what plans you have, uh, you know, any other topics maybe when it comes to living free you'd like me to talk about. I think the second video is going to be about debt, uh, definitely. Anyway, um, I see it's getting kind of dark out here, so it's getting harder and harder to see me. See if y'all can see some of that scenery around there. Um, 
I'm actually going to head in and go get something to eat. Thanks for watching. Talk to y'all later.